Hello everyone, so how is it going? So today I would like to show you one of my last devs, so basically what I have been up to lately. And as you can see from here, I have been using Fabric Splice and developing with that. And I have to be, it's pretty sweet. So you might be wondering what Splice, where well, basically Splice is a way to use the Fabric Engine inside different software. And doing so, if you develop something like that, you'll be able to import or reuse your code in different software like Nuke, XSI, Maya, whatever. Okay, so it's getting pretty popular in the industry. It's not that much use because in the beginning, but people are starting developing with it, and that's why I wanted to put my hands on it because I think it's going to be quite cool and quite important. So it's good to play with it, and I'm always happy to play with new technology okay so what uh, I I have been doing lately basically I had to implement a NURBS curve because fabric doesn't provide one yet so I wanted to play with that I always wanted to code a NURBS curve all the math to learn everything behind that so I said okay fine let's do it and uh, so in order to really get a grasp on the math I started by uh, implementing a Bezier curve, okay. So this is actually the one you see on the screen. So this is the Bezier curve, and uh, you can see it's actually behaved quite well. So the yellow line you see on the screen is not a Maya curve, okay. Is the the curve I'm computing inside the splice node? I can actually show it to you. Here we go. So that's the Bezier curve. Is the splice node? If I open that, put it here. You see, I can uh, not remove the debug information, not draw the curve. Okay, I have the control point in input and everything. Okay, and then I compute in a position and a tangent. And of course, I can change the sample. I don't know, like 50, for example. There is the degree there, but it actually is not doing anything. It's just a legacy thing I left behind because that's actually the problem with the Bezier curve. So the degree is defined by the number of control point minus one so what does it mean? it means that if you want more control points the degree is rising up means that you lose even more control about locality of the curve because adding one more control point affects the whole curve not just the end and let's see I can actually add another uh, locator at the end so let's grab the last one one let's press ctrl D let's duplicate yeah let's put it here and let's just connect it that that in actually no, I need just to translate I didn't plug the matrix control points there we go let's plug another one and we see we added another one but if I move here I'm affecting the whole curve even all the way down here because that's how the Bezier curve works basically okay uh, so this was the basic implementation also I had as you saw before uh, the API for basically computing a point along the curve defined by the parameter here so you give a u param you're able to compute a point along the curve and a tangent as you can see I have the point sliding along the curve see the tangent is working the point is working so with that you can start already doing some cool stuff but basically the next step is to be able to have a NURBS curve instead and uh, and of course still be able to compute a point and a tangent because the math is actually different to do that and I already did that we can see here let's let it load really quick and here we go so <coughs> sorry guys so the thing you see here it's a NURBS curve you see we have a lot of points here and we uh, sorry more control points and you see I still have locality over the curve I'm not affecting all the way down to the curve because that's how the NURBS curve works and uh, again I'm able to compute the point and the uh, tangent on, on one point so I can actually start to do something cool so for example all those normals basically you see here have been computed by me and uh, if you play with Maya curves you know that 
normals uh, are not that stable the one that Myers computes that because it's actually flip and it's actually correct because the normal is coming from the second derivative of the curve when the tangent is coming from first uh, so basically when you start doing for example an S shape it flips instead I have computed the normals using the parallel frame transport and by using this technique you see that doesn't matter what I do the normals don't flip they are always nice and cool okay and that's basically the same technique that is being used in games okay and now with that since I do that I can compute a point along the curve oriented properly so without flipping you see I actually have it animated here so it doesn't matter what kind of loop I do it's never going to flip because that's basically the way it gets computed and again all the code is written inside the node of the splice node you can see it here so let's open the KL editor so everything is here and actually you see there is a small bug here you see the normals don't have all the same eight because I think I'm not normalizing that after I compute the normal so let's do that really quick. You see, I just have to place the, the call the unit command on the normal, and here we go. Now they have the same length. Okay, so you see, everything is live. I can edit, recompile on the fly, everything is live. So, for example, I can change, let's see, that's the color of the curve. So, I can change that, and let's see. So didn't recompute. Haha. <laughs> interesting oh because I'm not calling that method there okay that's my fault but for example I can change the color of the points of the normal sorry you see again this is this is yellow I can just do it green like that there we go so you see everything is live is changing recompiling on the fly okay so uh, that's it guys it's just a quick demo of what I have been up to and then the next step I'm actually going to make a cartoony arm uh, out of that so I think I'm going to play with the bendy arm something like that okay so that's it guys stay tuned bye bye